You're taking a stroll on a warm summer afternoon. The grass is green, the sun is in the sky, and suddenly, you feel yourself sinking. You begin to panic, but then immediately you bounce back up. You test your footing and jump slightly. The grass bounces with you, like a trampoline. This phenomenon is caused by soil liquefaction. Excess water from heavy rain or floods becomes trapped in the soil, causing it to be waterlogged. This makes the ground temporarily act like a giant waterbed. While it may be tempting to run and bounce on this springy grass, it's best to tread carefully. The grass could potentially break open, and if someone fell through, it would be incredibly tricky for them to get back out again. An erupting volcano is already a pretty terrifying sight, with clouds of dark smoke and flowing molten hot lava. What's even more terrifying is that they can produce lightning. Volcanic lightning is pretty hard to study, so scientists don't know exactly what causes it. A common theory is that during an eruption, the ash picks up so much friction that it creates a buildup of static electricity. This static electricity then triggers the volcanic lightning. A fire whirl, or fire tornado, is exactly what it sounds like. They occur when ground winds pick up flames and escalate the embers into a whirling force. These spinning columns of fire can reach up to 1,000 feet tall, but luckily, they only last for a couple of minutes. Fire tornadoes are pretty rare, but they can be extremely dangerous. In Tokyo in 1923, a large citywide fire produced a gigantic fire tornado. The tornado lasted 15 minutes and devastated the city, causing significant damage and leaving 38,000 people injured. On a cold and cloudless winter night, you might have been lucky enough to witness colorful beams of blue and orange light reaching up towards the sky. These are called light pillars. They occur when light is reflected from tiny ice crystals that float about in the atmosphere. These pillars are more common in cold, northern countries like Canada or Russia. We've all seen the colorful rainbow arches that the sun produces. It's much rarer to see a rainbow light up in the sky, produced by the moon. This is called a moonbow. It's bright and colorful like a rainbow and occurs when moonlight reflects off water droplets in the sky. Moonbows are incredibly rare and can only occur in specific conditions. The moon must be very low, the sky has to be dark, and rain must fall directly opposite from the moon to create this lunar rainbow. If you're taking a moonlit stroll along the beach at night, you might come across the strange phenomena of a bioluminescent beach. This occurs when a microorganism in the water called plankton are agitated by the movement of the waves and give off a bright blue color. These microorganisms tend to live in warmer waters, so you can find these luminescent beaches in places like the Maldives, Puerto Rico, and even Florida. In Antarctica, you'll find the famous Blood Falls. Blood red colored water pours out of the Taylor Glacier from an underground lake. Scientists originally believed that the striking color was caused by a microorganism, similar to the luminescent beaches glowing plankton. But after further studies, it was discovered that the water has abnormally high levels of iron that oxidize and turn to rust the second they hit fresh air. In colder climates where lakes are frozen all year round, if you look pretty closely beneath the icy waters, you'll notice frozen bubbles trapped in the ice. These are small pockets of methane gas. Bacteria in the water feast on other organisms and digest them to produce methane. The methane turns into floating bubbles in the frozen water, trapped beneath layers of ice. Asparatus clouds are one of the rarest events in nature. This cloud formation consists of incredibly dark and storm-like waves of clouds. Although these clouds appear ominous and look like they carry a heavy storm, they usually dissipate without ever affecting the weather. These clouds most commonly appear in the Great Plains of the United States, but they haven't been observed since 2009. Despite being a famously harsh climate, the desert can produce some beautiful things, like desert roses. These are intricate rose-like formations of crystal clusters. The intense switch between dry and wet conditions forms the crystals and traps grains of sand within them to give them their signature color. From afar, you could easily mistake a water spout as a large tornado traveling over a body of water. In reality, water spouts are a type of funnel-shaped cloud. They are rotating columns of cloud-filled wind which often take on a darker color. Water spouts are much weaker and smaller than tornadoes, and they aren't strong enough to suck anything into them. This phenomenon typically occurs in tropical climates, and they usually dissipate before reaching land. You're walking down the beach toward the water. 
But something feels different today. The water is bright green, and your nose gets filled with a recognizable pungent stench of rotting eggs. Should you probably come closer to check this unusual phenomenon? Mm Mm-mm. Stop right now until it's too late. What you see is called a harmful algal bloom, also called algae bloom. And approaching it is a very bad idea. This bloom contains algae that can produce dangerous toxic gases. That's what makes previously popular touristy places deserted and outright treacherous. You can come to a sea or lake beach and spot something that looks like blue-green foam floating on or just beneath the surface of the water. Or it may resemble streaks of bright green paint. Some blooms, called red tides, can color the water brown or red. Anyway, once you notice something like that, try to stay away, keep in check that curiosity of yours, and don't go exploring. When algae decompose, Pockets of toxic hydrogen sulfide gas are trapped under the crust. If you unknowingly step on such a pocket, you'll set the gas free and can accidentally inhale it. It's enough to say that this is likely to end tragically. On some beaches, bulldozers pile up the algae into dump trucks and bring it to special centers. There, workers dry the seaweed and get rid of it. But sometimes, these centers have to be temporarily closed. Algae mixed with sand and mud smells so awful that local people can't sleep at night because of the stench. There are three types of dangerous algae that can gather into harmful algal blooms. Cyanobacteria, dinoflagellates, and diatoms. All of them are made up of minuscule floating life forms that use sunlight to create their own food. The blue-green algal blooms are caused by cyanobacteria. They produce dangerous toxins that destroy nerve tissue. It can get so bad that water treatment plants might be unable to get rid of the toxin. Then, local people are recommended not to use tap water. Dinoflagellates and one diatom species are responsible for creating red tides. They occur mostly in ocean bays. For a red algal bloom to form, the water has to be warm, salty, and rich in nutrients. Such blooms release a huge amount of different toxins. In Texas, red tides used to happen once in a decade. Now they occur every three years. In Florida, red algal blooms appear every year. Long, skinny diatoms can also produce toxic substances harmful to people. Even worse, if some shellfish, like razor clams, eat a lot of this plankton, they become toxic too. That's why cooking them for dinner can lead to a disaster. It's one of the reasons why marine waters are usually monitored. If toxin levels become too high, beaches get closed for shellfish harvesting. Harmful algal blooms can last for several days to a couple of months. They rid the water of oxygen, causing marine life to disappear. But it gets even worse when microbes start to decompose the algae at the end of the bloom. They consume even more oxygen in the process, and no fish can survive it. This creates huge areas of water almost totally devoid of oxygen and any kind of plant or animal life. Harmful algal blooms appear in the regions with too many nutrients in the water. And the most common of these nutrients comes from agriculture and other industries. Plus, winter monsoons have become warmer and now carry more moisture. This allows algae to gather in huge blooms. Some of them get so gigantic that the thick green swirls can be seen from space. Not all algal blooms are harmful, though. Some of them just add a terrible taste to the water, change its color, or produce revolting smells. Unfortunately, you won't be able to tell toxic algae from totally harmless kinds, judging only by their appearance. Algae aren't the only organisms that look deceitfully harmless. Here are other marine inhabitants you should never ever touch. The Arukanji jellyfish, found in Australia, looks tiny and totally innocent. But appearances are deceitful, and this baby, the size of a human thumbnail, is actually lethal. During stinger season, which lasts from November to May, tons of beaches get closed because of these itsy-bitsy creatures. What makes the jellyfish particularly dangerous is their miniature size. You will simply fail to notice one while swimming. Oops. The blue-ringed octopus looks not just harmless, it's breathtakingly beautiful. But don't let the looks fool you. You wouldn't want to disturb this relatively small 8-inch long creature. It carries enough venom to bring down 26 adults within mere minutes. And once the animal feels threatened, well, you can probably guess the outcome. At the same time, when left alone, the octopus is absolutely docile. 
The infamous box jellyfish, named for its cubic body shape, lives in the Indian and Pacific Oceans. Stay clear from a creature with a squarish bell and long dangling tentacles. And even if you see only a single tentacle, without the jellyfish attached to it, don't come close or touch it. The box jellyfish can grow up to 10 feet, and each of its tentacles has about 500,000 microscopic harpoons to inject venom. Unlike other jellyfish, box jellyfish are hunters. They can latch onto you by wrapping their slender tentacles around your limb or body. With how dangerous their venom is, it won't be a pleasant experience. The crown of thorn starfish got its name because of the venomous spines covering its entire body. Now, if for some reason you ever, you know, decide to wake up a sleeping giant panda or cuddle it, just remember that's a bad idea. Even fearless big cats like snow leopards are wary of bothering pandas in the wild. The ones you see in the zoo might not be that active, but they still have a massive jaw that can deliver a powerful bite. Their huge false thumb lets them get a good grip on their enemies. The most misleading thing about the leopard seal is its mouth, which always appears to be smiling. But they're actually rather aggressive animals and effective lone hunters. They like to play cat and mouse with their food, which includes penguins, fish, squid, and even smaller seals. Not so long ago, a leopard seal even dragged a marine biologist deep underwater. Hey, stop playing with your food! Anteaters feed on insects, citrus fruit, and avocados. Watch out! They have no teeth, poor vision, and bad hearing. Sounds kind of like my Uncle Rudy. They aren't aggressive and stay away from people. But if humans walk on their trails, anteaters can turn fierce and may fight. They get on their hind legs, use their tails for balance, and attack with their claws that are strong enough to hurt a jaguar or a land rover. Fluffy alpacas may seem warm-hearted, but they still have ways of defending themselves. They can spit up to 10 feet, and you don't want that stuff getting in your eyes because it contains stomach acid, along with chewed up grass. They can bite with their sharp fighting teeth that are at the back of their mouths, and they have soft toes to give enemies a good kick. They can't really do more damage than you might get in a fight with a child, but it's best not to upset them. There are three things that brings out the nasty side of a Tasmanian devil. When there's a predator nearby, when they're competing for a mate, and when they're protecting their meal. Also Bugs Bunny, but that's a cartoon. These guys normally feed on insects, birds, frogs, and fish, and they like scavenging more than hunting. But if you intrude upon their home for any reason, be prepared for a painful bite. Their teeth are strong enough to eat through bones. Elephants are so clever that they understand the feelings of other elephants, and they even try to help each other. They can also take revenge on people who upset them. Elephants sometimes block roads and show up in the villages of people who have been mean to them. Male elephants get especially aggressive when fighting over females. Watch out for those huge feet, they can really do some damage. Better pack your trunk! Pufferfish can inflate to several times their normal size to protect themselves against predators. Hey, my brother-in-law can do that too. Eh, just kidding. Most animals shouldn't try eating them anyways. There's enough poison inside them to finish off 30 people, and there's no antidote. So, if it's just you, you'll need to invite some friends along to spread out the poison. Nah, I just made that up. Swans tend to see humans as the biggest danger to their homes and families. Male swans get especially aggressive during the spring nesting season from April to June. When kayakers, rowers, or anglers get too close to their nests, swans start hissing and flapping their wings. If you don't pay attention to these warning signs, the swan might even try to flip your boat over. Dolphins are the only species on the planet, apart from humans, that can take another creature's life for no logical reason. Males sometimes attack female dolphins or even baby ones, and they don't do it for food. If an angry dolphin chases you, you have no chance of outswimming it. They can move at 22 miles per hour. The top speed of Olympic swimmer Michael Phelps is only 6 miles per hour, so he can't help you. Slow lorises are the only venomous primates in the world. They carry poison in their elbows. 
is transferred to their mouths during grooming to protect their babies. Plus, they scare off predators like pythons and eagle hawks using special markings that show how fearsome they are. If a slow loris bites a person who ends up on its territory or annoys it, the result can be rashes, anaphylactic shock, or, you know, even worse. Despite their massive weight and clumsy bodies, hippos can run much faster than people. And they have much sharper teeth. If you get in their way on their trip to the watering hole, their aggression kicks in. Before they attack you, though, they'll give you some warning signs. If you see a hippo yawn or make a sound like a laugh, it means it's about to get mad. Well, that's rather confusing, isn't it? Blue-ringed octopuses are really tiny, but their venom is a thousand times stronger than cyanide. They normally use it to hunt shrimp, crabs, and small fish. If this creature feels threatened, it'll flash its blue rings as a warning. If you don't pay attention, it may bite you. You might not notice the bite itself, but minutes later, you'll definitely notice the symptoms. Nausea, numbness, and even the loss of your senses and motor skills. So pay attention down there. Boom! This word isn't nearly enough to illustrate the explosion, the most powerful one you've ever seen. And what's most important, it's a lake that's just blown up. Hey, all you wanted to do is light up some fireworks in this picturesque place. But you must have totally missed the danger strictly no fire warning sign along the way. And now, the wall of fuming water is quickly closing in on you. But first, let's rewind to the beginning of the whole thing. You're in Alberta, Canada, and have just arrived to Abraham Lake for a hike of your life. The lake is frozen, and the view is awesome. Those bubbles under the ice look like hundreds of frozen jellyfish. In reality, they're made of methane, a toxic and highly flammable gas produced by bacteria living on the bottom of the lake. That's why the sign is there. If you so much as light a match on this ice, it might set the whole thing on fire. Luckily, you've taken note of it on the way here and put away the fireworks you wanted to light up. Another place, another time. Another lake. This one's not frozen. In fact, it probably hasn't seen a winter since the last ice age. We're in Cameroon now, and the place is called Lake Nios. It looks peaceful, but make no mistake, its orange-brown waters hide a deadly secret. The lake rests atop a highly volatile area, and the fissures in its bottom let out massive amounts of carbon dioxide. When the ground shifts, this gas spills out of the lake and flows miles around it. The concentrations are so high that one breath of it would make you faint and you'd have zero chance of waking up. Eh, you get the picture. But the most sinister thing about it is that the CO2 doesn't have a smell or color. So you wouldn't even see it coming. Local authorities have set up a system of pipes that drains the gas from the lake, making it mm, relatively safe for people and animals in the vicinity. And another toxic lake, Kivu, on the border of Congo and Rwanda, has even been made to provide energy for millions of people thanks to its gases. While we're in Africa, the Danakil Depression in Ethiopia is also worth a blood-curdling visit. Dubbed the hottest place on Earth, it sure lives up to its name. The ravine is peppered with extremely hot springs, toxic acid ponds, and active volcanoes. The landscape is surreal, to say the least, and is probably the only inhabited place on Earth where no life can exist. The Afar people live here all year round and gather salt around the springs for trade, while scientists couldn't find any evidence of microbial life in those. Humans are notorious for settling in places most would gladly avoid. Take Mount Tambora in Indonesia. Thousands of people have been living on and around its slopes for centuries until the fateful day in 1815. Tambora is a volcano. And that year, it decided to erupt, resulting in a blast that obliterated everything on the island and was heard almost a thousand miles away. It spewed out so much volcanic ash that it fell in sheets on the surrounding isles and caused a year without a summer in the whole northern hemisphere. It was the most powerful eruption in the last 10,000 years, and Mount Tambora became as much as 5,000 feet lower after it. But back to our time. There's an island you won't be allowed to visit, but I bet you wouldn't want to anyway. The Snake Island in Brazil is home to thousands of snakes, as its name implies. 
the moment you step on its soil, you're in grave danger of being bitten by a viper. The island is also the only place you can meet a golden lancehead viper. The encounter of a lifetime, literally. This place is so dangerous that Brazil has banned tourists and any other visitors from it unconditionally. Okay, gotta go. Now, get your warmest clothes on and don't forget a fur face mask. We're going to Omayak in Russia. It's a small town in the far north that's often called the coldest place on the planet where people still live. The only place with a lower average temperature is Antarctica, and that's saying something. In the winter, if you so much as forget to put on a sweater, another sweater, another sweater, and a fur coat, you'll get frozen to the bone in mere seconds. Temperatures here drop to the chilling minus 96 degrees Fahrenheit. Fresh fruit turns to chunks of ice in minutes and becomes so hard you could drive nails into wood with an apple here. Now, before you freeze in place, let's go somewhere no boat will take you. The skeleton coast in Namibia. No, really, you can only drive or fly in here because boats and ships won't go near the place. The waters are treacherous. Sudden gales toss vessels around, and sharp rocks hiding underwater are all too happy to ram into their hulls. The coast itself stretches for hundreds of miles and is divided into southern and northern parts. Visitors on all-terrain vehicles are allowed freely into the southern part, but only about 800 people a year can get to the northern one and only with guided tours. People are known to have been lost in this desert forever, and it's a daunting place to go. It got its name from numerous animal carcasses found here. Hmm. Still, about 50,000 indigenous people managed to survive in this place along with adapted animals, lizards, hyenas, and even elephants. Now, you'd expect a living destruction machine anywhere but the heart of Europe. Naples, one of the most famous cities in Italy, is built on top of an active supervolcano. In 2018, scientists noticed this monster of a mountain was building up magma in its depths. They say it isn't likely to erupt in the near future, but there's a smaller yet no less dangerous volcano just a few miles off, the infamous Vesuvius. You might remember it for the immolation of the Roman city of Pompeii about 2,000 years ago. You might, but I wasn't around then. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.